Thank you, Karen, for that beautiful music this morning. The Lord be with you, and good morning, friends in Christ. This is Pastor Jenny, Reverend Jennifer Richards, here at St. Paul's Lutheran Church in New Cumberland, Pennsylvania, on this Good Shepherd Sunday morning. It is good that you're here, and I want to say thank you to those of you who are lifting up words of uh, hello and prayer requests, and of course, the little uh, birthday greetings to me. Yes, today is my birthday. I'm 51, although a lot of people have been guessing other ages, which were much lower, and I thank them for that. <laughs> I just want to say thank you and good morning. There are quite a few things that I'd like to bring before you this week. Um, first, a word of thanks to my parents who made my day possible. <laughs> and a good conversation with my parents over the past week. And one of them, with my dad actually, uh, led to the sermon for this morning. So I'm really grateful um, for the gift of my parents. And if you're a parent or you've got your parents around, Today's a good day to give thanks to God for them. Uh, just a few things to uh, bring before the community. One is that we have a newsletter that goes out. If you're not on our list for the newsletter, please do message, message us here and we'll make sure that a newsletter gets sent to you either digitally or through snail mail if you give us your uh, address that you'd like to have it sent to. And in addition to that, um, Jim, who, who uh, manages <laughs> the whole place around here pretty much, has mentioned to me that uh, we could use some things for the newsletter. So one of the things that I recommend folks do is if you've got a little thank you letter or something that you'd like to share with the community, this would be a good time to flood the office with those well wishes and words of gratitude that can be included in the newsletter. Um, that gets passed around to everyone and, and they can see where you're seeing God at work in the world. So if you've got a little thank you to somebody, that would be a great thing to share in our newsletter. One big word of gratitude that I'd like to share is with the president of our congregation, Doug Morris. He's been um, tending to this community in, in so many ways, not just helping Gene care for the property around here, but he's also been sending letters and making phone calls. And I know that many of you um, as uh, community continue to do that to, uh, with one another, just checking in and caring for each other. And that is... That, that just gives me such joy to see that the body of Christ is there to encourage and lift one another up and find ways to help each other. There have been several um, prayer requests that have come my way. And, um, and before I get to the prayer requests, so if you've got some and you want to share them in the me messages below, please do that and then Jim will collect them up and, and text them to me so that I can use them at the end of the service. But something happened this week that really changed my life. And my colleague, Carol, um, Carol Caring is her name. She does um, workshops and retreats. And on Monday, I got to go to a retreat that she and uh, the bishop's assistants, um, Pastor Jorgensen and Deacon um, Marsha Roscoe, they were assisting Carol in this retreat that she did on Monday. And what Carol is, is an artist. And she, she encouraged those of us who are not necessarily artists to get a camera and to see God through photography. Um, you know, our professional Dave, who set this whole place up, probably could tell you many stories around things that, where he had seen God at work through photography. Uh, but this was my first time really doing this myself, and I am not joking when I say one of the pictures that I took was in the backyard of the house where uh, Tom and Elizabeth and I live, and there's a creek that goes back there. And I took a snapshot and I put it back on the computer, and as I was looking, you could actually see what looks like footsteps across the water. And for me, seeing God in that was, you know, the story of Jesus walking on the water, was just a reminder that God is always present. And it just brought joy to me to see God in my own backyard. Uh, that was pretty cool. So if you get a chance to go to one of these retreats, 
um, please do make some time to go. Carol is awesome at this, and I know she'll have some more retreats coming, and I'll let you know how those are coming along. Maybe she will, too, in messages here, and invite you into those retreats, a chance to stop, rest, refresh, and rejoice in knowing that our Savior is always with us. So thank you, Carol, for that gift. All right. So we have flowers on the altar today, and those are from Judy, her aunts. I think she said that, do you remember, Karen, how old she said her aunts were turning? 93? 93, is that right? Okay, it was in the 90s. Her aunts are twins, and they're turning in somewhere in their 90s, and their birthdays are on April 30th. So for Florence and Margaret, we're going to give God thanks for their lives, these twin sisters. Also, um, uh, there are a couple of folks that have had a tremendous amount of death happen in their lives, and we want to pray for Tim and Jan Rutman. Um, let me tell you, they have a triple whammy, and, and Jim at the the coffee hour here that we have, Zoom coffee hour, told them, look, the deaths and things like that come in threes, so you should be done. So they've had their three. Um, so Tim's co-worker, Jason Pierre, we, we prayed for him last Sunday. Um, he had been struggling and suffering with alcoholism and died. And then um, Tim's Aunt Brenda Moore has just died. And then Jan told us, do you remember we've been praying for Dorlene Morgan, who's been in uh, hospice care, and, and she just died yesterday. So we're going to keep uh, Tim and Jan and their family members in our prayers. Other people who've been asking for prayers are Lori Shank's sister, Danielle, um, <clears throat> Jen, um, who comes to church, and also I see she's online, um, her landlady's sister, she's praying for Jake. Um, and the cleaning lady here at the church, her name is Amy. Her mother died, so we're going to pray for Amy. And, of course, my hubby always asks me to keep Ronnie Wolf in our prayers. So if you've got some others, um, we'll add those in as well. <clears throat> and I know that Jim's been keeping contacts here. So from Bonnie, we have... Um, Antonella, oops, Antonella Nestor. Because she's starting chemo. We'll pray that that chemo kicks out whatever bugs and things are going on in her body. From Kathy, her sister-in-law, Phyllis Smith. And from Brenda Lombardi, of course, we'll continue to keep Julie Byrne in our prayers. If you have others as we go along, we'll include them at the end when we have our prayers. Well, my beloved friends, as I told you this week, um, this is Good Shepherd Sunday, so we're going to hear or say together the... Um, 23rd Psalm, the Lord is my shepherd. And we'll be hearing that theme throughout the prayers and the liturgy itself. Uh, if you have a copy of the bulletin, you can join me if, uh, in the prayers together that we speak aloud at, at times. If you don't have it, no worries. And if you're watching this service after the time of Sunday morning, I still encourage you to include prayers into the messages because I do go back and look during the week. Um, so that I can include folks into my prayers. Let us begin our um, service now as we call upon God's name. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Refreshed by the resurrection in life we share with Christ, let us give thanks 
for the gift of baptism. We thank you, risen Christ, for these waters where you make us new, leading us from death to life, from tears to joy. We bless you, risen Christ, by your Spirit who comes among us into the grace-filled waters of rebirth, like rains to our thirsting earth, like streams that revive our souls, like cups of cool water shared with strangers. Breathe your peace onto your church, where we hide in fear. Clothe us with your mercy and forgiveness. Send us companions on our journey as we share your life. Make us one risen Christ. Cleanse our hearts. Shower us with life. To you be all praise with the Holy Spirit in the glory of God now and forever. Amen. Our opening hymn is Good Christian Friends Rejoice and Sing. Hymn number 385 in the ELW. shepherd of the sheep you seek the lost and guide us into your fold feed us and we shall be satisfied heal us and we shall be whole make us one with you for you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit one God now and forever amen our first reading comes from uh, the fourth chapter of the Acts of the Apostles and this follows right on the heels of last Sunday's text. The next day, the rulers, elders, and scribes assembled in Jerusalem with Annas the high priest, Caiaphas, John, and Alexander, and all who were of high priestly family. 
When they had made the prisoners stand in their midst, they inquired, By what power or by what name did you do this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, Rulers of the people and elders, if we are questioned today because of a good deed done to someone who was sick and are asked how this man has been healed, let it be known to all of you and to all the people of Israel that this man is standing before you in good health by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead. This is Jesus the stone that was rejected by you the builders it has become the cornerstone there is salvation in no one else for there's no other name under heaven given among mortals by which we must be saved the word of the lord thanks be to god as i told you as we were preparing for worship our psalm is psalm 23 one of my colleagues on Wednesday in Bible study said, you know, we often focus on the green pastures and the still waters. And he said, why don't we, instead of listening to the end of that sentence, listen to what God is doing. The Lord makes me lie down in green pastures and leads me. So as you're reciting this psalm with me today let's listen for what god's doing and hear how god let's listen to what god is doing in this psalm okay psalm 23 the lord is my shepherd i shall not be in want the lord makes me lie down in green pastures and leads me beside still waters you restore my soul O lord and guide me along right pathways for your name's sake. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, and my cup is running over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Our second reading comes from 1 John, the third chapter. We know love by this, that Jesus Christ laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for one another. How does God's love abide in anyone who has the world's goods and sees a brother or sister in need and yet refuses help? Little children, let us love, not in word or speech, but in truth and action. And by this we will know that we are from the truth and will reassure our hearts before him. Whenever we, our hearts condemn us, for God is greater than our hearts, and he knows everything. Beloved, if our hearts do not condemn us, we have boldness before God, and we receive from him whatever we ask, because we obey his commandment and do what pleases him. And this is his commandment, that we should believe in the name of his Son, Jesus Christ, and love one another, just as he commanded us, all who obey his commandments abide in him, and he abides in them. And by this we know that he abides in us, by the spirit he has given us. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. according to John the 10th chapter. 
Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand, who is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away. And the wolf snatches them and scatters them. The hired hand runs away because a hired hand does not care for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own and my own know me just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that, I do, not, that do not belong to me. The loves me because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me. But I lay it down of my own accord. I have power to lay it down. And I have power to take it up again. I have received this command from my Father. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. So many beautiful texts for us today. It's been kind of a tough season for some folks. Many of you know that I like to hang out with my colleagues, uh, my clergy colleagues, and, and also fellow co-workers. You heard me say earlier that I hung out with uh, Carol as she was training us. On, um, during the rest of the week, I also have other pastor meetings. One of them, uh, the dean of the conference that I'm in, had a conversation with us and said, you know, I guess he was getting a lot of phone calls from pastors that were really struggling. <laughs> I can't even imagine, right? <laughs> I think we're all struggling. And he said, you know, I'd like to ask you pastors as we're gathered here, what do you do when you're having a bad day? Some are beyond just having a bad day. It's been a bad year for many. So as the dean asked, what do you do? I just started to think about the folks that are having more than just a bad day who can just kind of have a spa retreat and it fixes everything, right? Lots of people look at the church and they think, the church is gonna fix it. They believe something that there are pastors out there that are teaching, which is called the prosperity gospel. I don't know if you've met this gospel yet. Um, they believe that if you just follow Jesus, then everything will be perfect and well. Life will turn around and good will follow you and your life will prosper. And you know, those of us who go to church, right, we know that, that we have perfect lives, right? <laughs> not true. <laughs> life is not perfect by any means. But this prosperity gospel teaches that all you need to do is believe with all your heart in the Lord Jesus Christ and good will come. And when that doesn't happen, when, when we come to church and we start seeing the brokenness and the intolerance and the struggles that people are having in a real way, they become disillusioned by this message and the obvious fallacy of that kind of theology. We know this theological teaching is not true, right? It's not. Following Jesus means death. What? Yes, real death, true death, not fake or theoretical death. It's a real legitimate death, a death that isn't ideal, is it? For those of us who actually live through death, we understand what that means. Everything hurts, and there's real fear. You feel alone and fragile. There's even a place inside of us where we hear a voice saying, Ah, oh, you deserve this. You're not worth it. You're not worthy. We know it's not true, but we still hear it anyway. It's the real valley of the shadow of death that we hear in Psalm 23. 
a place that we all walk through. So if following Jesus doesn't just fix a bad day, <laughs> what do you do? I mean, some troubles are really big. And they can't simply be fixed by, I believe, <laughs> and a Pollyanna attitude. And all the troubles go away. I don't want to thank my dad here because he and I had a very powerful conversation around this as I was on a drive on Friday, and it led to the gospel part of this message. This Sunday, the fourth Sunday in Easter, is always named Good Shepherd Sunday for a reason. It's the Sunday when we hear about Jesus' identity as God who shepherds us. This identity as a shepherd of sheep is historical in the Bible. Do you know where that historicity comes from of shepherds in the Old Testament? If you said it's with the kings, that royal calling, then you're correct. <laughs> the kings of Israel were not to be like other kings or other rulers in the area, but they were to care for the people of God and Israel like kings do, like shepherds, I mean, do for sheep. In fact, the most famous, the most well-known king of all, King David, was literally a shepherd when he was a little boy. He used his life, life sorry, lessons from life <laughs> to defend the entire army of Israel. Do you remember what he did? He took a slingshot and whoosh, to kill Goliath, and because he killed Goliath, the Philistines said, okay, we're going to go away. We, are, we agreed to just one lone soldier against that little David. And where do you think he learned that slingshot lifestyle from? From being a shepherd, protecting sheep. But this boy who became king of Israel was not perfect by any means. Those of us who followed the story, and you can catch these stories about David growing up and becoming a king in First and Second King. He had a man named Uriah who was married to a woman named Bathsheba killed. He had that power as a king. And he used that power to kill Uriah in order to take Bathsheba as his own. There were consequences, and you can read about that in the book. But despite those personal failings, and there were many, many, many of them along the way of his leadership, David. God still identified David as the apple of my eye. Interesting that God continues to choose such flawed creatures, flawed people to lead. <laughs> Maybe it's not that interesting. I was chosen to lead, and I know my flaws. <laughs> David's role for caring for the people was a calling to care for people like he did as a shepherd, sleeping with one eye open, <laughs> keeping an eye out for what might be after his sheep, and leading the sheep to places of water and good pasture, searching for those who might wander off and healing those little creatures with wounds. His job was without stop. Despite David's personal failures, his fervor for God did not quit. He continued to return to the Lord, and he would repent. He wrote many of the Psalms that we know today, which remind us that God is not some distant, far-off, uncaring deity, but a close, intimate, relational God who hears our pleas and walks with us through the dark valleys. Jesus claims, I am. Whenever I hear that in the, the Gospel of John, I always hear the word I am as that identity, Yahweh, of the ancient times, God, God's name. Jesus says, I am the good shepherd. When we're having a bad day, Jesus claims that we're not on our own. 
He's right there with us in the field, going through the dark valleys where we are, even when it is barren and drought ridden and without a lick of water around, a place where we're feeling desperate and surrounded by wolves bearing down on us. Psalm 23 and other scriptures don't tell us that the shepherd will just pluck us up out of that dark valley. It says that God's rod and staff are there to comfort us. And one of the things that I recognized this time when I heard it this week as I was listening, that rod and the staff, I always imagined them as kind of like prodding sheep to move along. But maybe that rod and staff was meant to be pushing away those wolves and those things, swatting away at those things that might be after me. God uses that hook, <laughs> the crook, to kind of gather me in away from those things that would take me away from the path that I want to be on. When we're in the midst of our enemies, that psalm tells us, when we're in the midst of it all, God has a table prepared right there in the middle of it to feed us for the journey through the place. God's goodness and mercy don't just follow us. The Hebrew tells us they pursue us all the days of our lives. You know God's goodness and mercy are pursuing you? They're after you? You know I'm like the kind of person who's like, oh no, it's just terrible. Life is sucking and I cannot handle it anymore. And God's goodness and mercy are like pursuing me. Jen, listen to the voice of God. Listen to reason in the middle of your mess. God is here. You're not alone. God is persistent in being next to you. What do you do when you're having a bad day? Should we just deny it? Push it away? Claim that we need to just believe a little harder and God will wipe it away? What I get from my life of discipleship and texts that we have us uh, in front of us this morning and my conversation with my dad and dad and other colleagues and friends in Christ is this. I know that there are difficult days of stress that are beyond the point of enduring. Yet I know that I am promised by God that I am not alone and neither are you in this time. God is not only there with his rod and staff to swat away at the demons and things that persist in trying to cause us pain, but God is also there with food and fresh renewing baptismal water to nourish and anoint you, to anoint us for this journey through. God showed us what a good shepherd looks like when he sent Jesus who said, I lay my life down for my sheep. Jesus promises that we can trust his voice and follow him through the darkest valleys. His love is powerful enough to not only go through death, but to defeat it. Like David with a slingshot, Jesus slew death. And as he says in John 10, 18, I have power to lay down my life, and I have power to take it up again. This is what Jesus has done for all of creation. No matter how much I believe or don't believe, no matter how much I trust or fail to trust, no matter how much hope I've got or no hope at all, this God is the good shepherd who's there with us and for us and all of creation anyway, and your ability or inability to do what is right is not the key to the hope that is in front of you. The key, the way forward through this bad day, is what Jesus did and continues to do. You got to put the emphasis on the right syllable. <laughs> it's got to be on what God is doing. God's love is the key. His love that persists beyond our ability to go any further on our path before us will carry us through. 
So what are you going to do, my friend? I think that the best question or the better question here is, what is God doing? Do you see it? Can you feel it on the edges of your mind when that voice says that you don't deserve it? That nudge of love, <laughs> that one that's still persistent in there, or even seen in a picture when you snapshot it <laughs> of the water and all of a sudden you see God at work. In this community here at this congregation, before COVID happened, there was a practice that the pastor before me, Pastor Sharon, started, I believe. And it was a beautiful practice. She would pass a, at the end of the service before we would have the benediction. A microphone cordless would get passed around the pews. And folks would mention places where they saw God at work in their lives. God at work in this world on a bad day. I miss that tradition. <laughs> it felt good to hear where God was at work in their lives too. Is it possible for us to reorient our eyes towards seeing Jesus the Good Shepherd and naming where we see God in our bad days? I'd surely love to hear about these days that you have because that's what we call witnessing, testifying, the encouraging word that the church needs to hear from one another of resurrected life. Are you having a bad day? Where do you see God? Let us pray. God, I don't know what to do when I'm having a bad day. I don't even know how to lift my head to speak to you. But I ask you to help me to see you in the places that hurt. Bring me your peace that passes all understanding. Forgive my inability to trust and believe, even as I'm asking for it. Help me, Lord, to trust you and to hear your voice. Help me to see you, the Good Shepherd. Amen. Our hymn of the day is The King of Love, My Shepherd Is. Ha, huh, the connection there. That's from the ELW 502. I think we have six verses, but it's a short hymn. Is it all right if we do them all? You okay with that? All right. Are you? <laughs>
we continue with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. At this moment, I'm going to pause and take a look at the cell phone and check in on those, play, those names that you've added to our prayers. Hopefully Jim will be able to have passed them along to me. If you have others that you would like to pray for, now would be a good time to pass them along. From Linda Crockett, there's a request to pray for her sister Barbara who had eye surgery. And there's a little happy birthday to me from my hubby, too. <laughs> that was really cre very kind of you. And, and thank you, all of you who are saying good morning and greeting one another. Um, this, is, this is a wonderful place, a wonderful community to be in your midst, to pray with one another, and to worship our Lord. So thank you for being here. God bless you. All right, let us pray together. Alive in the risen Christ, by the power of the Holy Spirit, we bring our prayers before God, who promises to hear us and answer in steadfast love. Loving shepherd, you know your own and your own know you. Your voice calls us to your loving embrace. Strengthen your church throughout the world that we bear witness to your expansive love. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Gracious Spirit, you are generous with your gifts of goodness and mercy. Restore your creation to wholeness so that cities and towns, countryside and wilderness may abound with life. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great hope-giving shepherd. The nations and peoples are your heritage. Place into the hearts of all leaders and rulers the passion to serve. Crucify any desire to overpower others and give leaders joy in lifting up the lowly. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. Abiding shepherd. Your love flows as we reach out to those around us. Move us with your spirit so that we lay down our lives for those in need. Today we pray especially for Peggy Warmcastle, Joan Ruth, Ken Dapp, Heather Yoder, Anita Painter, Pastor Sharon, Bailey and Carter and Trevor, Kristen Klingeman, Martha Muller, Angela Heim, Ben Long, Pat Hefner, Carla Ziegler, Jan Barrick, Ken Lytle. We also bring before you today Lori Shank's sister, Danielle. I bring before you today my dad in gratitude for our theological conversations and my mom for giving me life on my birthday. We pray for Jen's landlady's sister, Jake. We pray for Ronnie Wolf. We pray for Bonnie Antonella's 
uh, Nestor starting chemo, from Bonnie for Antonella Nestor starting chemo. We pray for Kathy's sister-in-law, Phyllis Smith. We pray for, from Brenda Lamberti for Julie Byrne. We also pray for um, Linda Crockett's sister, Barbara, having eye surgery. Who else shall we name before our God? You can say them out loud or text them in the messages. Pray for my family. Pray for my church, my community. Help us love one another in truth and action. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Saving Shepherd, you restore us to wholeness. Help our community in our life together and give us vigor as a people of faith. In the midst of challenges and opportunities, I guess we can name whatever those challenges and opportunities are, Lord, in our jobs, in our families, in our homes, in our churches, in our relationships on Facebook and other places online. Fill us anew with your Holy Spirit. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Eternal Shepherd, you hold us securely in your loving hands. In the assurance of resurrection hope, we remember our loved ones who have died in you. Today we're going to pray especially for Jason Pierce family, for Dorleen Morgan and her sisters and the family. We're going to pray for Amy's mother who died and for her family. We're going to pay, pray for Tim's aunt, Brenda Moore, who died, and their, that family. Who else shall we name? Folks who have gone before us and we miss them. Maybe this is an anniversary of their death. Friends that we love and are gone. We also remember, especially this day, the evangelist Mark. Bring us with them to dwell in your house forever. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. In the hope of new life in Christ, we raise our prayers to you, trusting in your never-ending goodness and mercy through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always, and also with you. Yeah, you can hug yourself if you're by yourself, but if you're able to, Pass the peace to a friend. Miss Karen. <laughs> I don't see Dave out there. He's somewhere. Oh, there he is in the way back. Peace be with you, Dave. And peace be with you, my friends. And thank you for all the happy birthdays. Thank you, Miss Holly Cutts, for the happy birthday. And I think I saw Greta way up there earlier at the beginning of service. Thank you for being in church. It's so good to see you here. I I can't wait for the day when I can actually see, see you. And some of you who are coming and don't live anywhere close, if you want to come to the Zoom coffee hour, I'd love to see your beautiful faces again. I miss seeing you. And uh, it would be great to hear how you're doing. Thank you, friends, for being in worship today. We're going to continue here. Um, Little children, let us love, not in word or speech, but in truth and action. And boy, oh boy, was Jim's article this week right on the money about that, laying down your life for others. Thank you, Jim, for that little uh, weekly Wednesday uh, newsletter that you put together. Care of God's good creation is love in truth and action. Ponder how you might better exhibit this love through your care of our planet and all that God has created. Oh, I forgot, wasn't Thursday um, Earth Day? <laughs> yeah, it was a good day to remember how the planet could be cared for. One small step 
might, what one small step might you take this week? Yeah, let's think about how we might care for God's creation. Um, Doug brought over to Elizabeth a whole packet of flowers. Remember last week I showed you that Elizabeth is growing some flowers for butterflies. He brought her a whole gift of packed. I want to say thanks, Doug. And she can plant milkweed along our stream in the back and, and some other um, flowers that bring butterflies. And he's, he was trying to tell her in a letter that he wrote to her that he's so proud of Elizabeth for wanting to take care of God's earth and creation. And it just fills me with such happiness and joy that we do that with one another in this community. And I encourage you to find ways that you can care for the creation around you. Let me hear it. I want to hear your stories of how you're caring for God's world. God bless you all in what you're doing. We'll continue as we um, wind up our time together of worship with the Lord's Prayer. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. May our glorious God grant you a spirit of wisdom to know and to love the risen Lord Jesus. The God of life, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Our recessional or final hymn for this service is from the ELW 544. Praise the Lord, rise up rejoicing. and share the good news. Thanks be to God. We will.
you, Karen. That was beautiful. Thank you all for coming to church this morning, and God bless you. I'm seeing so many of you here this morning. It was good to see Faye this morning and Brenda Lombardi. Who else is here? Joanne and Anita and Carol's here and Holly. <laughs> oh, my goodness. So good to see so many faces here in worship. Let's see. I'm Barbara. Who else? Linda. Oh, God bless you all for coming to church today. Kathy Schindel and Bonnie and Sunny were here. Uh, um, oh, my goodness. Just so many folks. Randy was here and Jennifer. I'm not sure how to say your last name. Is it Hood? Huda? God forgive me. You've got to help me pronounce your name. Sorry. Um, Susan Smith is here. And, and let's see, Jan and Tim and, of course, Swagger. <laughs> So good to see so many of you folks here in worship. And Donna Rittler, God bless you. God bless you all for being here in worship this morning. I'll see you next Sunday. Peace be with you folks.